<laughs> Let's go semi-auto. Yee, doggies. Click. Wow. Doesn't take long to have a lot of fun, does it? Yeah, this is the uh, Type 56. It's a Spiker it's AK. Hey, that's not what the video is about. It's really about an SKS Type 56, isn't it? <laughs> well, we thought we'd kind of start at the end and show you where it ended up, more or less, with the AK, okay? But we mostly want to talk about the SKS. A little different from this animal. And so I'll lay it down over here. And we're clear. For those who don't know, usually an, S, an AK uh, doesn't lock back on that last round. So there it is in all of its splendor, its beauty, right? <laughs> we've got several firearms here. We've got a Mosin, and we've got a, a Russian uh, SKS, and we've got a couple of uh, Type 56 Chinese SKSs. And that's why we're here primarily, okay? I've got a few other things out there, just there's uh, for reference uh, sake and uh, to talk about it and this is not you know everything you ever want to know about the type 56 because i don't I, everything i know how's that or part of what i know i i have not owned one again i owe you all an apology i've had the russian sks's for a long time uh decades and uh but but never uh type 56 chinese and i'm just so sorry I, Partly out of ignorance. I didn't realize that they're, they're really well made, generally speaking. You know, I just, uh, like a lot of people with the AKs and everything else, they think, oh, well, it's made in China, it's junk. Yeah, but not the case. Sorry to inform you, okay? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that today. And I want to, and uh, beautiful table, beautiful table. Now, uh, you might hate the SKS, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have come to appreciate it more in recent years, and I've always liked it. They, they've always seemed so solid. You know, I've had the Russian model uh, forever, and I had two of them, got two of them at the same time, and paid 99 bucks a piece for them. I've told you all that before. And uh, that's back when they were $99. And just, uh, I don't get it out that much, but I've just always thought they were a very, very cool. You know, built-in bayonet, like a Mosin Model 44 or something, and uh, most of the Russian models had the blade bayonet, although the early Tula models, I understand, had the, the spiker bayonet, and then they went to the blade bayonet, and this is a Tula 1954. Most of them were made in Tula, the Russian uh, SKSs, uh, quite a few, or a few for a couple of years, and uh, what, Ishek, or however you say it, okay, but most of them were made in Tula, and this one has is, is, uh, never been issued, nice one. Oh, yay! But, so, we have some Type 56 Chinese versions here. One thing, of course, what I do, I start out shooting an AK, right? But one thing, you know, I think we need to remember, and I'm kind of playing into that, uh, I think a lot of us think of the, well, they're pretty cool. Most people like them. They used to be really cheap. Uh, but yeah, they're just not an AK, you know? A lot of people uh, replace back in the day and maybe still do that uh, put a 30 round mag on them and if you can do it and I think there's a model that came that way and all that to try to make an AK out of it uh, and everything uh, but they're not really an AK and we probably should put them in place maybe uh, in terms of just reference move back in time and think about the difference between this baby here this Mosin okay bolt action rifle and how it compares with an SKS because I'm talking of course the Russian model but you're going from bolt, bolt action hold what five rounds uh, big old bolt action rifle that got the job done they're not a Mauser but they got the job done a five shot bolt action rifle and and say you're going to battle with that, and then someone hands you this. Hey, would you rather have this? Either the Russian or the S or the Type 56, either one. How about this one? Uh, it's just a, a plenty powerful enough round for the kind of combat that you know troops are really engaged in for the most part, right? We finally learned that over the years. Uh, it holds 10 rounds. Whoa, 10 rounds, and it's semi-automatic. And then with a stripper clip, it's quick to reload. So, you know, that, uh, you know, it, I don't know if it's as heavy or maybe it's not quite as heavy either. And very reliable and very solid. Uh, so, 
Hmm, and guess what? It's got a bayonet, you know, built into it like that. So, you know, so compared with that, that's quite a step up, you know, most people would think, okay? So, it, you know, that's probably what we should compare with more so in, in the history of firearms than with the AK, you know, duh, of course, the AK is an incredible piece of machinery, right? But just one point I wanted to make, and I got into uh, to this, and it buds, it's been about a year now, I guess, I was over at their Sevierville uh, brick and mortar gun shop in Sevierville, Tennessee, and they had a bunch of these. They were in the Cosmoline and on the rack, and I, I just didn't have a Type 56. I thought, you know, I don't want to buy one. They were about 400 bucks. I ought to buy one of those, and I did, and brought it home, uh, and cleaned it up, and here it is. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of rough looking, but it's all matching, except for the stock, you know, and it seems to work fine. We fired it, uh, you know, so, who knows how long that thing was in Cosmoline. As I understand, a lot of these ended up in Albania, and then uh, they uh, have, they over the time, decades, they became a neutral country, and uh, and that was the, that's the criteria for these to be imported. They have to have been in a, a neutral country for how many, y'all tell me, 20 years or something before we can import them now, and that's that kind of thing, and so they qualify. So a lot of them have come in in, what, the last year or two from Albania, uh, but I think most of them are, are, are Type 56s. I think Albania made some themselves too, didn't they? And that's the thing. I don't, I'm not the expert. You have to check with... Uh, there's some people that, that go in extreme depth with these. Like uh, I think Ian at times maybe. Uh, uh, Misha, if you're familiar with him. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, there's a fellow. I'm not sure what his real name is. But Type 56. No, no. Not Type 56. Uh, uh, Factory 26. Uh, I misspoke. Factory 26 is his user. No, it's not. It's triangle. I'm sorry. Because that's the uh, the symbol. And it's right on the gun for the one of the main factories where these are made in China. Triangle 26. Okay, I'll get it right in a minute. That's his username. He has some great videos on the SKS. I mean, really goes into depth and knows a lot about them. I've learned a lot from him about Norinco, the companies, and and you know just different things. The slam fire issue, the free the floating firing pin, and and it just things like that but uh but i wanted to kind of give you an overview and and also you know got a couple of them now we're going to do video we just never to get a video i guess with this one i might have brought it down on a sunday uh morning video and also i came across this one and i just because i kind of like that and but boy this one is nice it's all matching and even the stock and just just a really nice type 56 this one was made in 1965, that one in 1969, okay? And you can tell through the serial numbers. Uh, you know, this one has the, the 10, uh, which you add to 55 is what you, how you come by that in the 10 million range, and 65. This one is, uh, has a, what, a 14, I think, yeah, it makes it 69, all right? And again, uh, Triangle 26 covers all that, how to date them. There's, there's exceptions, you know, he goes well into that. But, uh, but still, uh, you can learn a lot, you know, about the basics. And that's my main concern. There's always a lot of different variations of almost any rifle. And they're made in so many countries that, uh, you know, you, just, you can spend your life studying these, of course. And I always struggle. I want to make sure I struggle in this video, too, with the, the clips. Because every clip that we have seems like it's it's kind of difficult to use. I would like to find some off picked up off a battlefield that have been uh, well used maybe somewhere and uh, see how they work. So let's take a couple shots with this baby. Okay, SKS, SKS. All right, it's got the safety right there. Okay, you just pull it down and you're ready to fire. How about the gong? <laughs> uh, that red plate in the middle. No, the one on the right. I think I can see it better. Oh, well, we got to get it up a little bit. 
How about a two liter? <laughs> nice. Boom. All right. Get my, I was going to paint that front sight white uh, before the video. Actually, I couldn't find my white paint. But uh, just fun to shoot. They're very gentle and recoil. They, they really are. And uh, whether it's a Russian or the, the Type 56 uh, uh, China. And I also want to thank Alabama Holster for their support of the channel. Uh, great little Kydex uh, holsters, functional. Uh, reliable, uh, simple in design, just very functional. Uh, they, they make the pocket holster, the outside the waistband, inside the waistband, purse holsters, a variety of types of holsters. You've seen them here. I've got one in my pocket right now. Uh, just really, really nice product, and we appreciate their support. Uh, so the Type 56, why, uh, why is it called that? How did it come? Well, 1956, right? The, uh, very briefly, again, you can find information on this. You can read. There's there's a lot of good information on the SKS. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the Russians, uh, who was it? Uh, Sergei Simonov came up with this in, a, you know, what, in his 40s, early 40s, mid 40s, and 1940s. And this is why it's called the SKS 45, right? But then right on the seals, you know, here comes the AK, you know, Kalashnikov. And, and so about time this thing gets up and running, it's adopted and they're using it. Uh, then, whoa, this AK is pretty cool, and it really is in keeping with our doctrinal warfare more so than, than that anyway, and it seems to work and all that. So, so the SKS had a little trouble getting going uh, uh, in a big way in Russia, but uh, they had trouble with the AK because, uh, you know, many of you already know, it started out as a uh, making it, it was manufactured with a stamped receiver. That didn't come just later. And, and they were having trouble with the stampings and, and the rivets and, and you know all that kind of thing. I don't know how far into production the first few years or whatever. They, so they had to drop back and punt and figure out how to make the receiver out of just millet. Just millet out of steel, block of steel, which I think maybe it takes longer and more steel and of course all of that. And so they had to kind of re-engineer re that thing to, to make it uh, you know, out of a block of steel. And that uh, provided a delay, which gave added life to the SKS for a while, even in Russia. Although as they got the, the uh, AK going and numbers and issued and everything, they, uh, they started dropping off the, the SKS. They went to the AK, as we know. Now, of course, those countries, communist countries, they're, uh, they're very good about making sure all the other guerrilla movements around the world uh, are provided firearms, right? So they started providing firearms and the design to everybody that was a, a friend or an ally of them, and uh, including China. And so China started making it and with Russian supervision. And then, uh, then they just, they went with it. Uh, the Chinese uh, loved the SKS more so than the AK. It fit with their doctrine of warfare more so. Uh, you know, you've got your built-in magazine. Uh, it's a rifle, built-in bayonet. You, you, uh, you, you don't have to carry a bunch of magazines. You can carry clips of ammo, which is lighter. And uh, they, they didn't have the supply lines that you know, would uh, maybe Russia did and some other country like we would. And so this really fit in with their style of warfare. And they loved it. And that's the thing about the Chinese. They kept this thing going even if the Russians had just kind of relegated it to second line troops if for, for decades and continue to tweak the manufacturing, different things about the firearm itself. And uh, they, they improved it. And there were a lot of people in the know that will tell you that, that the Chinese versions are actually a little more accurate than the, the Russian versions. We always think of the Russians as being, that being the, the quality of version of it. And it is, it's nice. All right, let's see if we can hit something with this thing. Yeah, how about a, how about a buffalo? You reckon many people have hunted buffalo with one of these? Or rams? Going high, right? There we go. <laughs> Is there any cinder on that barrel left? Hi, it 
driver's side. Well, I might need to adjust the sights back up to that plate. Mainly, I need to paint them, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Really a sweet shooting rifle. Uh, you know, you may have a mental block against them, but a lot of people don't. A lot of you own them, I know. And uh, I had a little bit of a mental block against the Chinese versions of them. I just did. It seemed like, I don't know, when you, when you see one at a gun show, it just looked cheaper. And maybe it's because of the wood, primarily, and maybe it was I, in some ways. But uh, they're, they're uh, very well made, and they have a, a fine reputation, like the AKs, the Chinese AKs. They're, uh, I, now, I have two versions, like I said, and uh, they're very similar, but 65, 69, and they made some changes. You know, I think it was uh, 64 when they went to the spike bayonet, you know, from the blade bayonet, and... Uh, this one has the uh, sling swivel on the upper part of it. And sometime during 65, they moved it down here, I think. See, you got that sort of thing. This one has a milled, it's all milled, milled, uh, you know, trigger guard and everything. This one is stamped. So by 69, they were stamping, you know, doing some things like that that were, uh, you know, more efficient in terms of production. Uh, and then there's just lots of changes through the, through the evolution of it. But really, really nice. They used to be so cheap. The Chinese versions, the Type 56, were even cheaper uh, than the Russian ones. You know, when these started hitting the country, what, late 80s, long in there, 90. Uh, I had a friend I taught with at the time. His son was pretty short. He was young and short. And uh, he was just getting into deer hunting. And so I remember he bought him, because he came out here and sighted it. In fact, I think we saw one of them off out here. So he uh, brought him out here and they sighted that one in and uh, sawed the, the thing off and marked it. Uh, but you know, they were so cheap that you could buy one of these. At that time, it was right 59 or 69 bucks. And uh, he just sawed off the, uh, the, the stock to where it would fit him and maybe put a pad or something on it. And that was his deer rifle. He had made a good deer rifle. Uh, and that's back when probably weren't as many options available in terms of shorter firearms. But uh, I think he might have done that twice. He might have gotten another one and another stock at some point and done that twice. So they were just out there and they didn't cost a lot. Uh, like I said, even the Russian model when I bought it was 99 bucks. And those things, are, they've got kind of pricey. They really have. But uh, the one myth that I guess I'd like to help dispel a little bit, and same with the AK, the... Uh, you know, the, the quality is not poor just because it's a Chinese firearm, okay? Let's shoot them two liters here. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> There's a pot down there that needs smoking. Yeah, here's a couple right here. <laughs> nice little round. I've always liked it. Nice little round, gosh. Oh boy, what else about it? Uh, beautiful gun. <laughs> this one actually is good looking. I, I, in a contest of looks, I almost like this wood on this one uh, more than, than the Russian model. Of course, I gotta extend them and you know put something on them before I can shoot them well and feel right. I did the same thing with that Russian one. It's had that on uh, the whole time I've had it. And uh, yeah, man. Uh, what else about them that you might be interested in? Uh, they made millions of these things, of course, uh, the, the, the Russians, the Soviets, and, and the Chinese, uh, and they just got dispersed all around the planet. Uh, there aren't a lot of firearms that are uh, more widely used around the globe than this thing. I mean, the AK probably, right? But, I mean, really, really uh, extensive use in so many countries so many countries uh communist bloc you know uh, countries primarily but just widely used and then a lot of them came into this country so uh, that's why you see so many of them now it's all a secondary market it's just like uh what is it well mosins or anything else they come in and they're so cheap and you just almost can't give them a lot of credibility they're so cheap 
And uh, then a few years later, they start going up, up, and up. And by that time, you realize, hey, those are pretty nice guns, even at historical significance. And now, instead of $100 or something, they're $800, you know? So that's kind of the way it goes, isn't it? Let's try one more of these clips. And uh, uh, yeah, just uh, interesting history. And, uh, and again, the Chinese really like these used them for decades so the history in russia i think is what we all are familiar with of course now well the ak came along right away and they uh, well we don't need that thing anymore and we'll still have some troops maybe you know secondary troops border patrol troops and whatever use it but uh honor guards or whatever but you know that's yeah that's that's old hat not so around the world not so at all okay all right Let's see. Have we shot the target? We haven't, have we? Let's put a couple on it. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hey, that proves its accuracy, doesn't it? Can't believe it. I never did hit any of that cinder over there. I got to do that before we go. in a sight on that black barrel and uh, well, maybe I'm hitting it a little bit it's been raining for a week we well I'm, I'm shooting blanks let's try the red plate to make sure they're live rounds yeah they're live rounds okay <laughs> uh, anything else here we've missed uh, oh, there's a bowling pin. It's not been addressed. Boom. Yeah, pretty cool. Y'all are familiar with them, how the uh, magazine opens up and everything. You can drop the rounds out. There are a million videos on them. And uh, I'm just pleased to finally have a uh, Type 56, two of them actually. And, uh, you know, experience both. Uh, fun to shoot. Uh, the ammo is is not really as expensive as a lot of other rifle ammo that's for sure uh, so it's still available and uh, you know they just seem to be reliable and they don't recoil a lot that's one of the attractions if uh, if a rifle to you kicks too much most of the centerfire rifles you might enjoy one of these you know, you got historical value plus they're soft shooting because they've got enough weight and with that gas system it's actually a short stroke gas system different from the AK but it, uh, you know, it's, it's very pleasant, very pleasant shooting. And then two, the one reason they make a great deer rifle is right there, right? You got that built-in bayonet. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I know a lot of you don't want to believe that the, a Chinese SKS could, you know, be of any quality, but you know, they, they really are. Uh, do some research, check around, uh, look at some of the uh, content from some of the folks I mentioned. I don't know if Othias does anything. Has he done anything on SKS? It's, uh, it'd be a good one to check into as well. But if you want some really, really in-depth stuff, it's out there and uh, learn more about it. Mainly, my advice is get one and shoot it and uh, see whether you like it or not, whether it's Chinese or you go, it's Russian or whatever it is. They were made in a lot of places. And uh, yeah, nice round, 7.62 by 39. Same round, if you're new, I, I, I know I assume too much, but if you're brand new to firearms, this does fire the same round exactly as the AK-47, okay? The AK, the 7.62 by 39, just a really nice uh, cartridge. So, happy with my Chinese SKS Type 56. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it, uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to Im improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastall.com, talongungrips.com. 
And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter. The Real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.